Hey guys, how's it going? I'm really excited because today we're taking a look at the best light jet in the entire world. This is pretty much the most modern light jet, and I'd also say it's the best one. It has had a really long research and development time, and this is the Honda Jet. Honda test 21, wind 230, runway 27, clear for takeoff. 27, clear for takeoff on 1021. And yep, just like it sounds, this jet is made by the Honda Car Company. And they spent such a long time making this aircraft so well and so safe, the Honda still actually hasn't made any money on these jets yet. And in this video, we're gonna look at why this jet is so great. And if you're new here, I'm Cameron Cooper. I'm an aircraft mechanic and YouTuber, and you are watching Relative Motion, the channel all about showing you the most interesting places on the planet and the best means to get you there. And if you like this video while you're watching it, maybe consider subscribing down below because that really helps more videos like this come your way. Here we go. Honda Jet really is the best light jet in the entire world and it's really cool to see a car manufacturer get into the world of aviation. It's a very rare thing that happens and the only other company to do this was Ford but this was back in the days of Henry Ford and a very early time in aviation. So these were actually some of the first airplanes. The planes that they built was the Tri-Motor and the Model 2A which was Henry Ford's idea of the Model T in the air but actually never took off. So it's really cool to see Honda make almost the modern version of the Model 2A, even though obviously the Honda Jet has a much higher price tag. I think the reason car manufacturers are hesitant to get into aviation though, is they stand to have a lot to lose, especially for their reputation, if the aircraft they produce don't do well. And Honda has really set the bar high with the Honda Jet, because this machine really is an engineered masterpiece. Having been released to the public between 2010 and 2015, they actually started developing the Honda Jet in the early 80s. The first prototype which was far from the modern Honda jet, actually used a turboprop engine. So it really wasn't a true jet in that sense. But after doing testing on the MH-01, in the 90s, they did develop the MH-02, which much more resembles the Honda jet, having true jet engines, and has them mounted above the wing, just like the modern Honda jet. It's almost too bad these didn't go into production, because they do look pretty cool, I think. So after the MH-02, they obviously went into developing the modern Honda jet. And the version we know today first took flight in 03 and then like I said and was certified by the FAA by 2010 and started seeing deliveries to the public somewhere around 2015 which I always talk about on this channel that means this jet is pretty new but I still think this thing is incredibly safe because of this really long research and development I really can't think offhand of any aircraft that's actually had a longer development phase than this and it's not even like this thing is that groundbreaking so I think a lot of that research when I'm making this a truly safe and efficient efficient machine at what it does. Some of the interesting groundbreaking features they did develop for the Honda Jet though includes a really modern and custom engine made by General Electric and was developed with Honda really just for the Honda Jet. Although they plan to put it on more aircraft and can actually already be put on a CJ1 jet as an aftermarket add-on. But I think the greatest feature about this jet engine is it was built to be really efficient and actually features the same sort of fan blades that you see on modern airliners like the Boeing 787, as I did already mention, these two engines that the Honda Jet has are actually mounted on the wing, which is also something you don't typically see until you get into large airliners like Boeing or Airbus jets. And there really are several advantages to this. One of the most simple being, it's actually a little less complicated to get fuel to each engine. Because if you're not aware, each wing in an aircraft is very typically where all the fuel is held. So wings are basically big fuel tanks. 
and when you mount the engines on the back, now you have to run the fuel all the way back there. Versus if the engines are right on the wing, it's very easy to route fuel to them. This is also typically a more efficient design overall for the aircraft, and on top of it, reduces engine noise in the cabin, especially when you're dealing with engines so close to you, because that noise is not gonna be transferred as much into the cabin. And then last, these wing mounted engines also allow there just to be more space in the cabin in general, and especially in the cargo compartment. But that's kind of the odd part actually about this aircraft, because it's so small and having those wing mounted engines on top, it can be a little tricky actually getting into the cargo compartment, just because that engine is kind of right in your way, but it can certainly be done. And if you actually own one of these, let's be honest, you'd probably have somebody taking the luggage out anyways. That's maybe, but even for billionaire playboys, Three o'clock is pushing it. And to add to the efficiency of these wing mounted engines, this is one of the few small jets that also has winglets, which is again something you don't typically see until you get into large airliners. And it's basically just a little 90 degree bend at the end of the wing that helps keep the air flowing over the wing, especially towards the wingtip. And all these features, even though they might be a little over exaggerated because of this jet's small size, I really think the Honda Jet has a beautiful and unique look all to its own. And actually one of the people in charge of designing the Honda Jet modeled the nose of the aircraft actually after a woman's high heel shoe. So I really think this is a great looking little jet. And the crazy part about the long research and development of this small jet is Honda spent approximately one and a half to two billion dollars developing this jet and still to this day actually haven't made any money on this jet. We're getting close to a billion dollars in profits from this jet. So if that gives you any idea of how much care went into making this and how much they plan to produce this jet for the long haul and to have no problems with it. So besides this, what else makes this the best light jet? I think this has to be for the obvious reason that when you look at all the stats of light jets, it's pretty much the best in most categories. It's the fastest light jet, has the best rate of climb, highest service ceiling, the furthest range. And because of the great design they put into this, like I've already talked about, being a bigger jet, it's, it still gets better miles per gallon than the Mustang or the Phenom 100. But the unfortunate part is with jets, there's a lot more cost than just the fuel. So you really have to look at an hourly cost to know how much a jet will cost overall. And most of these jets are gonna be about the same price per hour to operate. And like I mentioned in the Phenom 100 video, this is one of the only two light jets that come with a Garmin G3000 avionics package, which is as top of the line as it gets. And it adds to how high tech of a jet this really is. It's also the only light jet that I think really sits six people pretty well. Although I wouldn't wanna be doing this for long haul flights. It's really designed more for about four passengers with the four passenger club configuration that the Honda Jet has. And the last feature is a fully serviceable lavatory. And this is really getting into the first few lavatories that I think you can use on a Jet OK, especially from the sense that it's a lot easier to have serviced and not have to deal with. Because all other jets in this category basically have a cassette toilet or a porta potty. They actually have to pull out and empty manually, just like you might have to do in an RV or a camper trailer. And I think I've been a little critical on the lavatories of the other light jets we've talked about on this channel. But besides the Honda Jet, I think the Phenom 100 is really the only other light jet that has a bathroom that I think you would consider using in a situation that's not an absolute emergency. And also, like I've mentioned before, I think having these toilets is a good thing, even if they are for emergency use only. Because if you do have one of those emergencies, you're gonna be really glad you have it, even if that's as simple as just throwing up. The reason I would only use the Honda Jet and potentially the Phenom 100's laboratory is because they're actually placed at the aft end of the passenger compartment and therefore is the most secluded or private for when you have to use it versus the crazy toilet on the Mustang where you might as well just be using it right in front of everybody. And I talk about this in the Mustang overview video, which I'll link down in the description if you want to know more about the Cessna Mustang. But like all these overviews, they won't be fair if I don't highlight some of the negatives of the Honda Jet. And the biggest probably is, it is probably, as well as being the best light jet on the planet, it's also the most expensive. It is fairly similarly priced to some other jets in its class if you are buying one new. But if you're on the used market, you're going to get these jets 
not, for obviously the cheapest. Because these Honda Jets are so new, and I think fairly desirable, these Honda Jets tend to hold their value a little bit more than some of these other Jets. And I think you're going to have a hard time finding a Hana jet for sale for less than $3 million. For a lot of these other jets, if you buy an older one, you might be looking at somewhere around half that. And the last negative that's maybe worth mentioning is because this is probably the biggest jet. It also takes the longest to stop and to take off. But it's really not that much longer. And if you are looking to buy a light jet, this is something they're all not great at. Because jets, in general, as far as aircraft go, need about the most runway to take off. And if you're looking for a personal aircraft, for shorter landing strips, I'd be looking more into a turboprop. I think that's going to be a much better option for you. And I certainly plan on starting a new season at some point about the best turboprop aircraft you can get. And I'm really excited to show you about those aircraft. Hey, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really hope you got some value out of it. As always, at the end of these videos, I quickly play through the stats that I've compiled of the jets of this season. So feel free to pause at any time if you want to do a bit of a deeper dive and comparison on these jets. And until I see you next time, I'm Cameron Cooper, and you've been watching Relative Motion. Oh, hey there, you made it to the end of this video. If you liked this video, maybe check out this video right here or you can check out my entire season on light jets right down here. Just do like a, like a deep dive.